Casa Tresnia. Tremoka. Sitas, Sitas de Makolis. Mogos nas vidit. Gilligan, this metal disc you found is marvelous. Made of some strange alloy I've never seen before. But it's turned this instrument into a real honest-to-goodness barometer. Oh, no, you're not sticking anything in my mouth or any place else. Barometer, Gilligan, not thermometer. Anyway, we can finally predict the weather again, and thanks to this disc, with remarkable accuracy. That's good news. I'm gonna tell the others. Now, hold on, Gilligan. According to this instrument, there's a raging storm approaching the island. That's bad. But it won't get here for a couple of days. That's good. Now, the gyrations of this needle indicate that the storm will cause a gigantic tidal wave that'll completely wash over the island. That's bad. However, that wave will be so strong that it could force a boat into the shipping lane so we can finally be rescued. That's good. Only we don't have a boat. That's bad. Or is that good? I lost track. I'm afraid it's bad, Gilligan. As you are aware, the radio and all the rest of my instruments haven't worked for over ten years. But two days ago, Gilligan found this strange metal disc. And due to its incredible conductivity, I was able to fix the barometer. There's a major storm heading for the island. Oh, we've weathered a lot of storms, Professor. Ah, but this storm's magnitude has created a tsunami. Tsunami? Oh, no, a tsunami! What's a tsunami? Gilligan, that's an islander word for a tremendous tidal wave. A wave that will cover the island and sweep us all into the sea. That's what I call a real permanent wave. <laughs> you mean we'll all die? Uh, the upper class, too? Actually, this tidal wave may be our way off the island and back to civilization. I haven't worked out the details, but... Uh... I have only one thing to say, Professor. Work out the details. What is your idea, Professor? To lash all our huts together. You mean tie them together with the ropes we made of hemp? Exactly. That way we can ride out the storm no matter how severe it is. I got the idea from the South American Indians who invented the outrigger canoe. The heavy surf would always upset their canoes, but they found that by lashing three canoes together, they'd stay afloat. That's a great idea, Professor. It's just a question of having enough bottom. If that's the question, Skipper, you sure got the answer. Ooh. You mean, Professor, that you can make a seaworthy craft by lashing our huts together? Right. Well, congratulations. You invented a hut boat. A hut boat. I just coined a word. <laughs> There's been coins are beneath you. Oh, it's just an expression, my dear. How much time have we got, Professor? Three, maybe four days at the most. What can we do to help? Well, we need provisions. We need more hemp for ropes. But most important, we have to find a way to move the huts together and tie them. It's not going to be easy, but we'll make it. All of us. Fifi! Fifi isn't here! Thurston, we forgot Fifi! Fifi? Oh, that poor little poodle. She'll never hear us over all this storm. Will somebody please go get Fifi? Oh, Fifi! Here, Fifi, Fifi, Fifi! Here, Fifi, Fifi, Fifi! Fifi? 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 Do you think we'll find her in time? I doubt it, my dear. 
Oh, Justin, how can you be so cruel? How can you say such a thing? Lovely, because we didn't take Fifi with us. Don't you remember? We left her at home, on the paper. We did? Fifteen years ago. Gilligan's out there, and I'm going after him. Skipper, you'll never find him in that storm. And he's my little buddy, and nothing's gonna stop you. After nothing but coconuts and bananas for days and days, everybody's gonna be so surprised when they have fresh fish for dinner. Mmm, mm, boy, broiled snapper. Everybody's gonna be so happy. <laughs> hey, everybody, I got some good news. You spotted a rescue boat. No, that'd be great news. All I got is good news. Hey, we're having broiled snapper for dinner. Broiled? Uh-huh. How are you cooking it? With a fire. With a fire? Where did you build a fire? On the deck. On the deck? <laughs> Dumb, idiotic, thoughtless things that you've ever done. Well, I was only trying to cook the fish. But yeah, you, you almost cooked us. That would have been the end of the rescue. <laughs> I can't believe it. After 15 years, we're finally rescued. Rescued? 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 Rescued. Rescued. Rescued.
and gentlemen, this is Marshall Rogers, KBEX Hawaii, and this is one of the most exciting moments in the history of the Honolulu Yacht Harbor. on a tiny uncharted island somewhere in the Pacific, the seven castaways have finally been rescued and they're on their way back to civilization. to welcome the passengers and crew of the ill-fated minnow shipwrecked so long ago. Here they come into the marina now, rescued in the very huts in which they lived on the island. turned out to greet them. And the fireboat giving them a real hero's welcome. to give them an official welcome to Honolulu and the USA. Photographers are swarming all over the place trying to get a glimpse of the happy group missing for so many years. And look at that mob waving and cheering. to say aloha to the long-lost castaways. On behalf of the governor of Hawaii, may I present you with the key to the city. Oh, must open some big door, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the entire world was thrilled when the Coast Guard radioed word of your rescue after 15 years. Telegrams and calls have been pouring in. I'd like to present you with the most important one first. But this telegram is from Jimmy Carter. Jimmy who? Jimmy Carter. He's the president now. He succeeded Ford. Ford who? Gerald Ford. He came after Watergate. Watergate who? Oh, I'm afraid we've been away a long time. Yes, it seems that everything has changed. <laughs> I'm certainly glad that some things haven't changed. Thank you. I'm sure glad things haven't changed either. Yeah. Huh. Tell me, Gilligan, how does it feel to be found? It sure beats getting lost. <laughs>
stupid capitalist parade for a stupid cast of face. that you have finally been rescued. Well, we're just delighted to be back. Oh, yeah, 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 great. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is so fascinated that you were rescued by a tidal wave. Well, actually, it was this disc that saved us. Our barometer hadn't worked for years. So Gilligan found this strange-looking disc in the water at the edge of the lagoon. We have no idea where it came from. Get a close-up of this. It seems to have properties of an alloy that uh, I'm unable to identify. And due to the increased conductivity of this disc, I was able to adapt my crude barometer and predict the tidal wave. It's possible? Yes. It's recording this from spy satellites. Must notify chief of secret police immediately. You stay. Find out what you can. And so this disc turned out to be a truly good luck charm. That's why the rest of us decided that Gilligan should keep it. And I'll never take it off, ever. You're all back here in civilization. What happens now? Well, the fact is, later on, uh, we're going to all get together for a great big Christmas reunion on my new boat. But for the present, I guess we're all going our own separate ways. Yes, I, I think we're all going our own separate ways. Of course, our separate ways. Oh, not you and me, Lobby. I'm just a figure of speech. <laughs> yes, I'll be taking this profile back to all of my friends. I'm going back to the farm and to Herbert, my fiancé. And I to my Bunsen burners and test tubes. I guess we're all just going our separate ways. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, all. Thank Bye. you. It's nice to be here. Understand it, Gilligan. Understand what, Skipper? Well, I set our course for that little island just off the coast. Right. Well, it's been hours now. We seem to be heading straight out to sea. Unless the compass is wrong. The compass can't be wrong. I just cleaned it before we left. You cleaned it? Yeah, it's a good thing I did. It was really dirty when I got in there. There was a little piece of metal jammed at the bottom. I took it out there and threw it away, and I polished that copper. Oh, Gilligan, that was the magnet. That's what controls the needle that I steer by. Oh, Gilligan. We better not take any chances. I better start heading back. Aye, aye, sir. I'll steer by the sun for a while. What sun? What do we do now? Maybe we can circle the storm. We'll go west until... Send down the hatches. Send down the hatches. Send down an SOS. Send down an SOS. How do you spell that? Watch out! Mm -hmm.
didn't mean any harm, Skipper. Neither did the iceberg that sank the Titanic. Uh, any idea where we are? Not really. That storm turned us round and round and blew us all over the map for 12 days. But, but surely we must be someplace. If we weren't, we wouldn't be here. Uh, that's my lobby's long suit. <laughs> Logic. Yes. Well, wherever we are, thanks to your expert seamanship, Skipper, we're all alive. Hey, I know where we are. Now, how could you know that, Gilligan? That wind was blowing 90 miles an hour in every direction. But I know, Skipper. How do you know, Gilligan? Look what I found. Oh, no! The same island! Why are you all so sad? I mean, we're home again, huh? Yes, Gilligan. We're home again. Yeah? Oh. Hi, Skipper! <laughs> <laughs> Gilligan, will you please get lost? I am lost. We're all lost, remember? <laughs> oh, I remember only too well. And who's responsible for getting us lost and shipwrecked? You know who that is, don't you? Of course, I did. Don't you remember? Gilligan, I'm telling you, if we don't find some fresh water pretty soon, being shipwrecked is going to be the least of our problems. What's the most? We'll all be dead. That's the most, all right. <laughs> Salt water again. That tidal wave has wrecked all the underground springs. With this equipment we've got, we just can't seem to reach fresh water. But I'll have to keep on trying. Yeah, let me help you, Skipper, huh? Yeah. <laughs> just as I expected. What? Oh! <laughs> Gilligan, would you go drill your own well? Aye, aye. Aye. <laughs> Professor, have you seen my coconut? Yes, Gilligan, it's right there. Oh, thanks. You know, Gilligan, I have spent the last ten minutes trying to put these things together. You didn't do a very good job, did you? <laughs> Gilligan, you have an absolute knack for doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. You no, know, sometimes I do the wrong thing at the right time or the right thing at the... You took the whole radio apart. That's right, I am trying to get it to work. Why don't you put it back together again? <laughs> Gilligan, these wires are corroded. The condensers are full of salt water and the solid state circuitry is cracked. Maybe that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I, I do wish those turtles would lay rounder eggs Perhaps they'd roll better if you hard-boiled them <laughs> Capital idea, lovey That way the yolks wouldn't slosh so much <laughs> I just not... Mr. Howell? <laughs> Gilligan <laughs> That was a gimme <laughs> I fixed the radio! You did it! You did it! Storms are predicted throughout the area. Rain squalls are due by late afternoon. And here is the latest word on the search for the Minnow 2. This is the twelfth day since the tiny craft was lost in a storm at sea. The Coast Guard announced they are abandoning their search. It must be presumed that all hands were lost. We now resume our scheduled program. Happy Talk. Pardon me. Huh. Propeller. The engine. <laughs> Propeller. Engine. Airplane. Oh. Oh. It is an airplane. 
I can't believe it. Professor, the guy that landed this plane sure must have been some pilot, huh? Well, Gilligan, this plane has been falling apart for the last 20 years just like your brain. Uh, professor, uh, how did this airplane here, this ungainly thing, uh, and, and that aircraft over there, I explain to me, how, how did they get here? Yeah, and the machine shop, yeah. too. I've given that a lot of thought. Two disabled military aircraft and a work shed with tools and drums of gasoline. I believe that indicates that there was probably an emergency landing strip on this island during the war, covered over through the years by the jungle. Listen, I got a great idea. Why don't we put the two planes together and make one, and then you can fly us out of here, Professor? Oh, Gilligan, that is the dumbest, the stupidest, the most ridiculous lame brain idea you ever had. No, 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 no. Hold on a second, Skipper. Maybe Gilligan's got something. And it's not dumb or stupid. How about ridiculous or lame brain? <laughs> no, no, listen. When I was back in the States, I saw a movie on television, The Flight of the Phoenix. Oh, I saw that too, Professor. That was a great movie. You see, these guys are flying the plane over the desert like this. And all of a sudden, one engine on one side started coughing. And the other side started wheezing. And then the wings started wobbling like this. And then they, they crashed right into the sand. And then there was sand everywhere. Sand, sand, sand. Water, water, water. Uh, get the dear boy some water. What is he prattling about? One of the men in the movie figured out how to take various parts from a wrecked airplane and construct a plane that can fly. That's exactly what I meant. Professor, you mean it's your intention to build an aircraft from these two wrecks? Precisely. My good man, I'd sooner fly with wrong way Feldman. <laughs> hey, look what I found! Of them all. Oh, that's only your opinion. I <laughs> did. Figures are correct. Yes. Combining those two aircraft should make a plane that will fly. That's amazing, Professor. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Congratulations, Professor. You have the only computer in the world that uh, <laughs> gives milk. I don't know if this panel is strong enough for an airplane. I'm sure it doesn't go on the outside of the plane, it goes on the inside. Oh. Besides, if the professor says something will work, it'll work. I mean, he has an engineering degree, you know, even if it isn't aeronautical. He knows all about stresses and strains of material and about aerodynamics and the theory of flight. Oh, and don't forget those flying lessons. Are you trying to convince me? No, I'm trying to convince me. Now, Gilligan, would you spread that pole? That's it. Oh, get my finger. <laughs> Skipper, do you know what we're making? No, don't you? No, I thought you did. Well, I don't know. Well, who knows? Well, the professor, I guess, he drew the plan. Well, I'm glad somebody knows, because if nobody knew, we'd never know when we were finished. <laughs> Just a couple more feet. That's good. All right, hold it right there. Oh, boy, that was hard work. I'm pooped. <laughs> okay, we're ready to start hoisting the wing into place. Now, Gilligan, you take that line and go as far as you can that way. Wait a minute. You expect me to lift this wing by myself? Well, it's based on the laws of physics. That pulley 
Used as a fulcrum will enable you to lift four tons or more. Four tons? By myself? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, go again. Here you go. Oh, come on. Shouldn't we be helping in some way, Thurston? We are, lovey. We are. We are? Yes, they haven't the time, so we're resting for them. Oh, good. I'm so glad we're doing our share. <laughs> to us, darling. Who else? <laughs> hey, have I got it up yet? Not yet. Keep going. I've got to stay here and help the skipper move the wing into place. Okay, Gilligan, you're ready to start lifting. Four tons feels more like 40 tons. Gilligan! Gilligan, that's enough! It took a lot of hard work on everybody's part, but we finally did it. Uh, exactly what have we done, Professor? Don't you remember the flight of the Phoenix? This looks more like the wreck of the Hesperus. It's obviously a no-frill flight. I feel like I'm back in Hollywood in a disaster movie. Oh, it's perfectly safe to me, as long as it stays on the ground. <laughs> Professor, straight from the shoulder, do you really think this plane will get us to Hawaii? Well, I'm not sure. So perhaps there's no reason for all of us to risk our lives. If I go alone, and I make it, I can send back help. We can't let him risk his life to save ours, can we? Why not? <laughs> Professor, even if you get back to civilization, how can you send help? We don't even know where we are. That's true, Marianne. I think we should all go. I believe you all have a right to your own decision. Now, if you're going to go, raise your right hand. If you're going to stay, raise your left. <laughs> No, you really must make a choice. I mean, where would you rather be? No, really, you must make a choice. Professor, we've all been through a lot together. I, for one, say that we shouldn't separate now. Unfortunately, the batteries aboard both planes are dead, so I couldn't activate either one. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to create sufficient amperage to arc the condensers, bypassing the rheostat, so we can start the generators. You all understand? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think if you arc to the rheostat, the uh, condenser will act? Never mind him, Professor. <laughs> Just get in the plane, and we'll get your engine started. Contact! Contact! Whatever that means. I need more power! Where's Gilligan? Gilligan! Where's Gilligan? 
again. Do that again. Wait. Maybe you can teach me how to fly the plane. Hi, Professor. How's it going? Well, I've tried changing the fuel mixture. I've made it richer, and I've made it leaner. I've tried changing the prop pitch, but I can't seem to eliminate the vibration and the structural damage. Oh, well, as long as there's nothing wrong. Kelly got the risk plenty wrong. I'm fighting to keep this plane in the air. I better tell the others. No, don't. You'll start a panic. No, I don't want you to say one word about this. Not one word. Believe me, I won't say one word. What's going on up forward, little buddy? Gilligan, <laughs> do you know something that, that we don't know? Huh? <laughs> 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 Skipper. Ooh, I hope mine is custom made. <laughs> Professor, Professor, how serious is it? Gilligan, you gave me your word. I didn't say one word, I swear it. All I did was give out the parachutes. They took a wild guess. Well, at the moment, there's no cause for alarm, Skipper. But, but there is now. Skipper, I'm going to have to feather number one. Now, with just one engine, we're not going to be able to maintain our altitude, so you're going to have to jettison everything that isn't nailed down. Uh, All right, Professor. Come on, Gilligan. Move toward that. Put the look on your face, Skipper. We must be in trouble. With a capital T. And a capital R. And a capital O. No. <laughs> we've only got one engine, so we've got to jettison everything we can. Everything. 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 Throw it out, Gilligan. Throw it out, Gilligan. That's it. There you go. Gilligan. Push it out. All we've got. Mary Ann, pull it out of there. That's it. Oh, no. Those bombs are expensive clothes. Oh, no. They must go, Lobby. Yes. Everything, yes. Come on, Kelly, oh, close this. This has to go. Come on, Mrs. Hell, this is no time to be choosy. Oh, I don't throw this. I don't like to say that. It never did become you, darling. No, I have to keep this. I'm not going to keep this. I'll throw that. Come on. Mrs. Hell, you have to get a little piece of luggage. Get Throw it out, Kelly. Why? I hope he remembers he's got a parachute on. He's still falling. I do hope the dear boy lands on his feet. If he does, he'll have flat feet all the way up to his chin. <laughs> he did it! He did it! He opened his chute! I love happy endings. <laughs>
you, lovey. Do we have to go through customs? Oh, well, I don't know, Mrs. <laughs> Oh, oh. Thank there you. Uh, uh, super landing, Professor. Remind me to buy you International Airport. <laughs> well, if we hadn't come back to look for my little buddy, we'd have all been killed. You're right, Skipper. The way that engine was vibrating, it would have fallen off in midair. Coming back to look for Gilligan undoubtedly saved our lives. Oh, but we don't even know where he is. Or even if he's alive. Well, let's get out of here and start looking for him. Let's divide up and form search parties. Oh! Goody, I love parties. Uh, no, 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 dear. He means we must search for Gilligan. Oh, well, of course. What would a party be without Gilligan? Oh, well, he could be any place, even in the ocean. Let's look everywhere, high and low. Just look high. <laughs> it's Gilligan. Hi, hey, little buddy. It's hanging in the tree. No. Gilligan. Oh. Are you all right, little buddy? It's all my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't fallen out of the plane, the engine would have dropped off and we'd all be dead. Instead of looking forward to dying in three days when the water runs out. Oh, come, come, Gilligan. None of us is going to die. Now, let's be logical. Let's figure out our options. Well, we only had a boat. I have a boat. Yeah, but we don't. Whoa! <laughs> Captain, it's lucky for us that you happened to land here. Not luck at all. A plane was spotted on radar, and when the blip disappeared from the screen, we thought it had gone down. So we started an immediate rescue operation. Hey, Hello, castaways. Wait a minute. Hey, I have an announcement. To commemorate the many years that we have lived here, I have decided to design a living tribute on this very island. A living tribute? A tropical Shangri-La. And for this purpose, money is no object. This? You said money is no object. Good heavens, I did. Yes. I may swoon. I think I will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> this and building this hotel is the best idea you ever had. Except for marrying me. Oh, yes, yes. The castaways. A hotel with no telephone, no cars, no television, no electricity. <laughs> Just the way we lived when we were shipwrecked on this island 15 years ago. And I was very generous, my dear. I made our fellow castaways partners on this island paradise. <laughs> Silent partners, of course. <laughs>